I've never been watching a movie and it has, I don't know, like The Exorcist, <laughs> since that's one, since it has a priest in it. You ever watch a movie and they have um, someone in a confession booth? Have you ever wondered what happens in there? Well, today, I'm going to tell you. Welcome. This is Gothic Androgen, and today on Mr. Coast, we're going to talk about how to go to confession. I am Dr. Nasir Uesugi Dubois, and I am going to tell you what it's like. We're going to look at what is a sin, what is confession, actually, how to actually say what you want to confess, um, what is the process, what does that look like, what are the steps of like when you're actually going through confession or the rite of reconciliation, and I'll explain what that is in a second, and then at the end, or maybe at the beginning, we're going to spill the tea because I actually just went to confession, um, I don't even have a watch on, let's see, how many hours ago? Four hours ago today. So, yeah, so we're going to spill the tea and I'm going to tell you what it was like for me. So, okay, let's get started. So, ever been to Catholic school? You know, when the nun whips out the catechism? Yeah, it's time to be afraid. <laughs> Hello, this is Nancy Usugi, and today we're going to talk about what it's like to go to confession. And why are we going to do this? Because I went to confession four hours ago. As an extra added bonus, I'm going to spill the tea about my confession today. Um, and we're going to talk about that. So, this is Gothic Androgen Podcast and Mysticos, where we talk about spirituality as a way to bring us closer to Source and to Light and the beauty of Universe and the Love and Gaia. So, just as kind of a disclaimer, so I am familiar from a Christian standpoint of Catholicism and of Episcopalian. So those are the contexts that I'm going to be speaking with. So Methodist or, uh, I don't know, Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormonism, I am not talking about that. I don't know if you actually... Um, uh, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I am not going to be talking about those today, but we're going to be talking about Catholicism, and we're going to be talking about Episcopalianism, or at least in the context of this discussion. And so how do I know that? I went to Catholic school. So, yeah. Anyway, what about the catechism? It's time to talk to the nuns and the priests. <laughs> so, okay. So, today, what is a sin? So, something bad. Have you ever been watching a movie and, um, you know, uh, they're, they're, they go into a, you see this, like, big, huge cathedral that's all, like, fancy with stained glass windows, and you see the candles, you know, and maybe on the side, you know, there's a little red and green light, and somebody's waiting to go into the confession booth. So they like lead up to it, and then they go in the booth, and you see the priest there with a stole around his shoulders. The thing that's hanging is just like purple or green, depending on what season it is, or red, or you know whatever. Um, and then you see the person come in the booth, and they say, "Forgive me, Father, for I've sinned." Well, that's confession. It's also called the rite of reconciliation. Um, and we're gonna see a little bit. This is a, uh, a book of common prayer. Um, so we're going to look at that, and we're going to look at our little catechism here. Um, I was going to show breviary, um, but I'm not going to do that. But we're going to get into it right now. Oh, and I'm not so used to And the last time I looked, um, and, uh, yeah, I'm a reverend. Oops. Booze monk. Gyro bag. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, so what is this in? Something bad. So, um, as part of my work as a uh, pastoral counselor, um, 
I like to focus on, you know, uh, bringing the words of love and peace. And I like to do that in the context of, you know, focusing on, you know, uh, people who are marginalized and usually not seen. Um, or at least they're not taken seriously. Or at least in this normal world that we live in are sometimes silenced. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the LGBT community. Um, or at least, you know, as part of the LGBT community. Um, you know, of trans experience, um, I think that that is something that's important. So, we're going to talk about, um, something that is a sin. So, there's something that's bad. So, what is a sin? It's something that defies or destroys what we call shalom. So, what is that? So, a sin is something that ignores our holiness, brings unhappiness, and defiles the magnificence of who we are. So, like we've all possibly heard, if you're familiar with Christianity, you know, God doesn't make mistakes. And, you know, we are, you know, made in the image of God. And so, a human being, by nature, is magnificent. And so... We all have a little spark of that fabulousness of the universe in us. And that makes, like, you know, let's say your, your body is your temple, or your body is your castle. So if you do something to harm your body, so something that, you know, is going to hurt us, um, then that is, you know, uh, destroying what you would call shalom. So what is shalom? So, it is God's design for the universal plan for creating uh, and flourishing and delight in our wholeness or our oneness. So, that's kind of a, I don't know, it's kind of a uh, vague definition. But, I'm going to actually read what the Catholic Catechism says. Okay, so let's get these little glasses here so I can look all scholarly. Whoops. So, here we go. Under the freedom from sin in the section Life in Christ and the Holy Spirit. So, freedom from sin. Why can't we love God, others, and ourselves as we would like? Sin is the reason. Sin not only injures and disfigures us, but it offends God, our good, all-loving Father. Instead of accepting God's love and favor, we turn our backs on him and cut himself off from the source of life and mercy. So what it does, so remember if you've seen the movie Dune, at the very beginning where Paul is sitting at the table with his mother, okay, and she says, well, you know, practice the voice, and he says, well, <laughs> mom, I'm tired, okay, I just woke up, and she's like, do it anyway. And so he's sitting there, and he closes his eyes, and they pan away, you see a little bull statue, you know, whatever, and they come back, and they get all that mysterious. And then he says, in a voice, give me the water. Okay, and it does this little voicey thing with the sound engineer, making it all like, ooh, psychic. Okay, and you see in his mind that, um, you know, uh, you know, the cup moves. So... That is a very telling scene. So what is, what does that mean? And, and we're using a movie here as a way to explain it a little better because most people have seen Dune. It was a, you know, very profitable and very highly ranked movie. And I, you know, and I think that it won some awards um, recently. I don't know if it was a Cannes Film Festival. I know it won some awards. Um, and Hans Zimmer did uh, the uh, music. Um, and Timothy Chalamet is the actor who plays Paul Atreides. Um, and Villeneuve is the uh, director um, who used one of his favorite, uh, I guess, one of his favorite movie growing up. And so he did a wonderful rendition of it. And supposedly they are currently started filming on number two, which goes into the Fremen and more of the uh, Lison al Ghaib. So. Look it up. Anyway, yeah, so let's keep going. 
Sin deeply offends God. To make this more graphic, some have said sin is like slapping Jesus in the face or driving nails further into his pierced hands. Christians must detest sin, realizing what it really is and what it does to us and to others. Our own sin turns us in upon ourselves, inhibiting our ability to love others and to reach out to God. So going back to Jesus is considered living water. I think that's in the Gospel of John. Oh, I don't exactly know where it is, so correct me if I'm wrong, I know you will. Um, so, you know, that's a little gyrobag moment of myself, so I will have to go look that up, and I'll put that in the community tab, what the actual answer is, where that shows up. But I think it might be in the Gospel of John, because um, I did a bunch of research, wrote a book on it. Anyway, um, yeah, so Christ is living water, and so if there's something blocking our ability to receive that water and that love... Um, from uh, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, well, then the water won't flow. And so what is blocking the water? Well, sin. So go on. Sin promises happiness. So you're there and you're like, okay, well, I'm going to, you know, do something naughty. <laughs> Could be anything. And I'll go into what is considered naughty later. Um, but... Sin promises happiness, but its fleeting pleasures leave behind either emptiness or an unsatisfied craving for something more. It harms other people and society in ways that we know of, but also in invisible, hidden, and indirect ways. So, you know, you know, gorging yourself and drinking a six-pack of beer, um, you know, in five minutes or, you know, doing something silly um, or, you know, stealing something from a store, it may feel good for that moment. You know, but what happens after that is that invisible peace. So even though initially it looks like it's going to bring us happiness, it ends up making us unhappy and potentially guilt and shame and all that bad stuff when you're shoplifting that you shouldn't do. Okay, so that's that. So what is sin? So, um, it... And so going back to Shalom, so which is considered to make it easy, the way things ought to be. So if man is made in the image of God, and God is perfect, then that means that we are magnificent, and we have a spark of the divine within each of us. So that would mean that we are beautiful, and we are enough, and that we are brilliant beings of light and the ultimate expression of that is God's divine love for us for he so loved his children okay so as that is the starting place you know I don't know if uh, the nun with the switch is going to be like what are you talking about Okay, well, I've had enough Jesuit professors tell me, sit down, shut up, and listen, because God is dead. Well, that's a actually, the problem of God, and I talk about this all the time, is a, so is a class that you have to take as a freshman at Georgetown University in your very first semester. You literally go into the class, or let's spill some tea right now, I went into the class, and the Jesuit priest who comes in the door and slams some books down on the desk at the front of the room with a bunch of naive, you know, green freshmen who are like, dude, I don't even know what this class is about. First thing my teacher came in, Jesuit and all his wonderful Jesuitness, you know, quest for knowledge. He comes in, the very first thing she says is, God is dead. Prove me wrong. Wow. Okay, so you're like some 17-year-old, you know, freshman, you know, 16, 17-year-old freshman, and you're like, blow your mind that you just told me that God's dead. What am I supposed to do with that? Okay, well, we'll get into that. So that's just a little spill in the tea. So what is confession? So confession is sometimes called the rite of reconciliation. So in the Book of Common Prayer from the Episcopal Church, um, hold on, it is called Confession 
and it's called the reconciliation of the penitent. So the penitent is the person who is committed to sin. Or it's either called the right of reconciliation. So technically it's just confession. <laughs> so that takes place in Catholic Church in a confessional. Okay, which is behind a great room with intricate cards and sometimes it has a little like, up and down open and closed thing, you know, and you see it in the movies and you're like, ooh, let's go to confession. You know, uh, you know, they come out and all this in the fancy church with the pews and all that. You know, we've all seen a movie about a priest and somebody going to confessional. So, what am I, oh, uh, what, yeah, I just watched The Prophecy a couple of days ago. So, I think, yeah. So, I think the first, second movie? Second, the second movie? The second movie. Yeah, I think the second movie, or in the first movie, yeah, there's just some scenes in the church, and there's a confessional. Um, I think there's a confessional. I could be getting my movies wrong. But there's definitely a church, and there's definitely, um, maybe there's some other movie, but yeah, uh, a confessional, okay? And a Catholic church, it takes place in a confessional, which is a room with, um... Uh, it, it's a small little room where the priest is on one side and there's a grate in between, um, and, uh, there is, on the other side of the grate is when the person goes in and, you know, forgive me, Father, I've sinned, um, and then you do the whole thing. So I'll go through exactly, in you know, very simplified terms, of what that looks like. But before we do this, um, I wanted to share, actually, from the Gospel of John, so we're going to do a little bit of that, so bear with me as we do that. So today's scripture is from the King James Version of the Bible. It is the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 16. Um, here we go. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give to you. So, I think in this discussion today, that's very important because there's a lot of discussion recently about the law of attraction and intent. And so, I know that my brain did a little bit of like not getting the law of attraction and affirmations and intent, you know. So, at first I heard, yeah, we all heard the secret years ago, whatever, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, I didn't know what it meant. And I was like, eh, whatever, why is just me saying something going to do anything? Well, in the old energy, it didn't do that. You had to do a whole bunch of work, <laughs> okay. But see, in this new energy that, uh, you know, 2022 that we have around us now, you know, intent and affirmation, saying things out loud, you know, like it says here, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. So if you are saying affirmations on a regular basis, and that goes along with the law of attraction, of putting yourself in a mode to receive those messages that are coming from, you know, the divine, the higher power, the universe, whatever, you know, and all the little helper, me you know, messengers, like, everybody's assigned a guardian angel when they're born, I think it's, like, you know, more than one, maybe three, we'll get into that later, but whatever, we were talking about sin. So, that was today's verse that I wanted to get into. So, how do you actually say... Confession. So how do you actually confess? Like, what are you saying? So what you're doing when you are doing confessional is that you are answering the question, what are your sins? And you are explaining it. And so what you want to do when you do this, and we'll go into what confession actually looks like. Confession actually looks like the right of reconciliation. How to say it. One. You want to be truthful, okay? So what you say, make sure it's true. Number two, be straight and to the point so what you're saying is direct. So we don't 
want a whole bunch of backstory, like you're saying, and telling a novel, you know, and you don't want a bunch of wax and wane poetic, like you were Lord Byron or Calderidge, you know, or, you know, you're writing the rhyme of the Ancient Mariner or your Edgar Allan Poe, okay? <laughs> so we don't want a bunch of that. And, and so, you know, um, you know, uh, a raven is a writing desk. Um, but, you don't want that. You want to be straight and to the point, okay? And what you also don't want to do is that sins are what the act of something that separates you from God um, and blocks your ability to bring in and have that water that love, that Christ consciousness fill you. So it's blocking you, okay? So it is blocking you from the light. So the priest is here when you do confession to, after you confess your sins, give you advice, counsel, guidance, um, and then to give you um, prayers and penance and absolution from your sin. But remember, the priest is not going to give you absolution for something that is not a sin. So what you don't want to do is what you want to confess is something that you personally have done that is considered to be a sin. So let me give you some examples. So... Adultery and fornication would be an example of impurity. Okay, and if you're talking to the LGBT community, um, you know, you would be talking about sexual deviance. But remember, God loves everybody, so I'm not, again, I'm not committing any, anybody to hell. That's not how it works, okay? God is love. God is not running around punishing people and sending them down the stairs, okay? I mean, you know, whatever. God is not about that. Now, okay, Ark of the Covenant, you know, and Covenant and, like, I don't know, Indiana Jones. We got a bunch of that, and we got a bunch of, you know whatever big rock chasing you as you steal the little gold statue and then the Ark of the Covenant at the end of the movie it blasts a whole bunch of bad people into the netherworld. Well, yeah, God can do that. But God is a God of love, okay? And so he's not yelling and screaming at you and telling you did a bad thing, okay? And he is definitely not torturing you, you know, and sending you to the ninth level of hell and admonishing you and scolding you, go to a timeout, okay? God is love. So I don't, I personally love everyone, okay? Now even if you, like, do some narcissist gaslighty stuff all over me and, like, whatever, you know, do some harm and not good stuff, return to sender, I'm not gonna, like, run around and, like, curse you with some graveyard magic, you know, so would it be. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that because that is wrong and it violates nine billion spiritual laws, okay, and there are rules. <laughs> there are things that you just don't do because karma is gonna come, okay? You can't escape things like that. So... Other things that are considered to be a sin that you can actually commit is like cutting or self-harm. So something that's considered to be self-abuse. So addiction. Um, so cutting. Um, you know, abuse, you know, not having boundaries and getting hurt by a narcissist who's gaslighting and giving you a whole crazy making conversation when you know that you should get away and, you know, it's, it's finally at a point where it's safe to do so. And again, don't ever come out and 
unmasked narcissist in front of you because if they're like a serious narcissist, some of that they can go ballistic and that's actually dangerous. So make sure that if you are in the process of leaving a narcissist, just leave. Don't tell them, don't give them a heads up, don't hint, don't say, don't unmask them, don't say, you're a narcissist. Don't do that, just go, okay? But make sure it is safe. Um, you know, if you need to get a restraining order or whatever else, then that, do that to protect yourself. But things like that, staying in a narcissistic relationship just for the sake of keeping up with the Jones that I'm supposed to be in a relationship, you know, where it's actually harmful to you and it, it's a situation if you do happen to have children that's harmful to them, you know, then that is definitely something that would be considered self-harm. So things like cutting, um, you know, addiction and whatever else, drug abuse. So those are just examples of, you know, what would be considered to be a sin. So something being committed. So you're actually doing something. So what not to confess? What is a non-sin? So an emotion is a non-sin. Your feelings are a non-sin. Somebody else's sin. So something that somebody else did that affected you um, or made you feel away or whatever or... You did something and that affected somebody else, and then they did something the whole chain of roller coaster events. You know, again, what you want your confession to be is straightforward. So don't wax poetic and give me Samuel Taylor Coleridge, you know, or, you know, Spencer and the Fairy Queen. I don't want a bunch of that. Okay, so give me, you know, Ozymandias, just give me some jelly and give it, you know, like, simple, to the point, straightforward words. I don't want any Shakespeare. Okay, so. What is a non-sin? Is someone else's sin? Um, it is when you're in a confession and you're actually saying the sin that was committed, you don't want to give excessive background. If you want to be straight to the point and be truthful, and if the priest has uh, needs some more information, he will actually ask you. Okay, so... Um, and this goes into don't confess emotions or temptations. So what is a temptation? So actually, so here's an example. So actually falling prey to cutting or actually doing the act of cutting or doing the act of drug abuse. Now, if you have a thought about it, so let's use cutting because it's easier. If you have a thought about it and a desire to do it, but you end up resisting that temptation, and by the grace of God, you were grateful that you didn't carry out the act because God's grace blessed you, and you were able to stop yourself, that is not a sin, okay? That is a temptation, but you didn't fall follow through because you were able to resist by the grace of God. So that is not something that you would confess because it's not a sin. Now, if you actually went through and did the cutting, which is considered self-abuse or self-harm, then that is a sin because you are hurting your temple because you are a bifinger being created in the image of the divine. So you are harming something that is divine. Is you as with the spark of the divine in you because God created all his children perfect and you are magnificent. So if you're harming something that's magnificent, that is considered self-abuse, which is a sin. Okay, so... Um, and then the last one is don't confess emotions. So if you got all angry and ragey or something because somebody narcissist did some gaslighting conversation that just like didn't make any sense and moved the goalposts and said the guy's sky is pink, and you know it's not gaslighting, crazy making conversation. That's an emotion. Um, now, if you stayed in a conversation with the narcissist and dropped your boundaries knowing full well that that narcissist was going to gaslight you and crazy making you and it was safe to exit the situation so you ended up exposing yourself to self-abuse 
okay? You have every right to protect yourself. And so if you do something to separate yourself from people that are harming you, okay, then separating yourself from something harmful, that's not a sin, even if it makes you feel bad. So like in the LGBT community, if you came out of the closet as transgender or gay, and then your father beat you up and drew you out of the house, and now you're homeless because they were intolerant and decided to kick their child to the curb, which is not an example of Christian values of all, because God is love. How do you do that? How would you do that to your child? You know, your child is telling you the most intimate thing about themselves. You know, that they ha have done their own internal exploration and have decided that they know what gender they are and are about to bar embark on that road. You know, being trans is one of the hardest things on the face of the planet. Why would anybody want to do it? Because they're going to get blacklash from everybody. <laughs> in the world, including people that they know, people they don't know, whatever else, you know, go straight to hell, okay? And, you know, <clears throat> so, I've been to hell, I know what it looks like, you know, I've been there, done that, you know, so hey, you know, I can tell, I can, I can give you a map, um, you know, I've also been reincarnated a whole bunch of times, but, you know, whatever, but, and had many lives, so in this specific life, um, I'm not going to hell this time. Because I'm not going to sell my soul. Hiakia. So, anyway. So that's what not to confess. So someone else's sins, give excessive background, something that's a temptation and not a sin, and not you're not confessing your emotions, because that's not a sin either. Okay, so now you got that. So, how do you go to confession? And so I'm going to give you ten steps here of what it looks like. This is a rite of reconciliation, and so that's what it is called in the Episcopal Book of Common Prayer. Okay, and in the Catechism, so this is the Essential Catechism, um, it talks about that, and talks about confession, and confession is a way of coming back in alignment with the light so that you can let the love flow through you. So sin blocks the love and the living water from coming towards you and flowing freely through you so that you can feel the love within yourself and you can express that love and you can give it to others because God is love, okay? And Jesus Christ is compassion. Um, and so that is important. So anything that blocks that living water, um, give me the water, Paul Atreides, um, is something that we're going to want to resolve. And so that is basically what confession is. So, here are the steps. So the first thing that you're going to do um, is that you're going to make an examination of consciousness. So even before you go anywhere near a priest and a confession booth and whatever else, is that you're going to sit down maybe the day before, a couple of days before, hours before, that you're going to actually go to confession, is that you're going to examine your conscience, what you did good, what you did bad, right and wrong, you know, and understand what it is that is considered to be a sin. So you're going to search your soul and search, search your heart, okay, and determine what sins did you commit and understand before you even go to the priest so that you are not sitting in the confession booth and trying to figure it out like your mind is spinning or whatever. You do that ahead of time so that when you actually get to confession that you have an understanding of what you're going to say. Okay. So that is called the examination of consciousness of conscience. Okay. So when you're actually there and you're, you know, going to confession, so you're doing it in a confession booth or you're doing it in the priest's office, um, you know, sometimes they have, um, you know, if you're in a confession booth, you can either do it so um, they can't see you through the grate, um, you know, because the pr priest is on one side of the grate and you're on the other side in the confession booth, or you can do it where you're, you know, you're there and you can actually see the priest, um, you know, uh, 
And so we're going to go into, the, like, I'm going to spill the tea on my confession today, a couple of hours ago. Um, and we are going to talk about that. So when you're actually there, okay, you're in the confession booth. First thing you're going to do is you're going to make the sign of the cross. So, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In the nomine potri, affiliate spiritu sancti. Okay, and so you can do that and make the sign of the cross. So, mm, 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 mm. And so, that. Um, and then you're going to say, step three, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. And then the next thing you're going to say is, it has been X amount of time since my last confession. Now, if you do know, it's been two weeks since my last confession. It's been three days since my last confession. So that's the length of time. Now, if you don't know that, and it's been a really long time, you can say, it has, I'm not sure when I, la when I went last. Okay? And so that's like if it's been five years or two years or a year or something like that or six months and you don't and you don't actually know when you went last okay so that gives you the priest kind of some information before you start so next step step number five the priest will um inform you even before the you know uh, he will lead you in the right so in the um episcopal church the right of reconciliation um, I think it starts out with a penitent. So this is the person that is actually confessing the sin. It starts out where they say something. So, bless me for I have sinned. So that was, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Okay, so that's how it starts out. Okay, then the priest will read his part. Then you will go into, um, uh, and then... The penitent is the person who is confessing the sins. The priest is the one who's going to give you absolution. And when they're doing the confession, they will actually put the stole on. And so today, I think uh, the priest, because I went to confession a couple hours ago, um, was wearing a purple stole. And I guess the color of it depends on the season in the church. Um, and each week of the, it has a certain... Uh, title, you know, so it's like, you know, week four in the season of Advent, you know, is just an example, or, you know, uh, week two in the Lenten season, um, and so that will determine what the colors are, and so you'll see that in the church, and, you know, all the different, you know, things that, uh, I don't know the ceremony name for it, but the decoration, the color of the candles in the church, um, the color of the stole, the color of the priest hat, ha, um, you know, uh, I forget what it's called. It's not a habit. <laughs> That's what the nuns wear. Um, you know, um, uh, yeah. So you'll do that. So the priest will lead in the rite of reconciliation. You will list, so step six, you will list the sins starting off with what is most worrying you and then after that you will list your lesser sins um the priest will not absolve something that's not a sin so if you ha if he has any questions so if you're explaining what your sins are and then you go off in a wax poetic or something the priest will try to redirect you okay and come back and they may ask you some questions to you know so if you say i want to confess this uh, i uh you know i did self-abuse and that's all you say well what is that so it could be sex it could be cutting it could be addiction it could be drug abuse you know the priest may ask you to get a better understanding of some vague term so that they can actually understand exactly what you did and so they may ask you kind of a leading question so that you can answer and explain more um and then that way the priest has a better understanding of you know a um something that's vague because you want to be like i said before you want to be truthful and direct okay so when now that you've listed your sins the priest will give you um, a set of prayers and penance. So they may say, you know, say 12 Hail Marys and go read, you know, some, I don't know, 76 or, you know, or go read the book of Daniel or, you know, go say the Lord's Prayer 10 times, you know, and so that is your prayers and your penance for confessing your sins. So that's your homework, what you're supposed to go do. Okay, and then after that, the priest is going to give you absolution. So, 
Um, if you're in the confessional booth, you know, the priest will say, okay, I, you know, absolve you, uh, blah, 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 you know, saying whatever the right words are, um, and then they'll absolve you your sin. Okay, so, that is the full process, and, uh, so that's what it looks like to go to confession. So now, let's spill the tea. Yeah, so I went to confession today a couple hours ago, exactly five hours ago, um, and, uh, yeah, and so, you know, confessed to little sins, priest asked some questions for some clarification, um, I did a little bit of waxing poetic, <laughs> so, um, you know, I had to be straight to the point, and that's another reason why I actually did this today, why I did this video, um, you know, to help people uh, to understand a little bit more about uh, uh, Catholicism, um, Christianity, and what the whole confession thing is. Because I think we've all seen, you know, a movie with a priest in there and somebody, you know, confessing their sins, you know. Um, and, and so when I did it today, you know, um, when the priest was giving me absolution, he actually put his hands on top of my head, okay, so we did that, and, you know, so I could actually see the priest, um, because we did that, now, during the point where I was confessing, even though we were able to see each other, um, you can either do it when you're looking at each other, or you can do it where you're in the same place, and, but, you're not actually, you're not looking at each other during initially while a confession of sin is going on. And so in my mind, it was a little bit more like, at this point, while I have sins in me that I need to confess, I am blocking my ability because of that sin of connecting to in this case the priest and being in oneness and ability to show compassion and feel that oneness of the collective conscious because we're all linked together and we are all one and so when i initially started giving a confession i opted not to look at the priest so it wasn't until i was asked some questions that i think i looked up once but i still did not meet his eyes until the process was done um so, like I said, he put his hand on my head, and I literally could feel that at that moment, his connection to the divine, I could feel that as he was giving me absolution for my sins. So, it's an energy exchange. Um, and it's a cleansing of that blockage. So, what I did experience today, I mean, this, I'm being totally truthful and transparent. I'm just giving you the tea, because... Yeah, so... My heart and my whole body, this five-fingered being with the all-spark of the divine, after the priest absolved the sins and it was over, I felt lighter, my heart felt open, and it was like all of a sudden rushing in came all of that light and I was able to spread it and I was able to reconnect 
to the divine source. So we're all able to connect. But some of us are tuned to the wrong channel on God's heavenly radio station. <laughs> and <laughs> that's funny. I don't know where that came from. That was definitely channeled from somewhere. Uh, so, yeah. At the moment that my sins were absolved, it was like a weight fell off my shoulders. And so, the way the Catholic Church has it, is uh, in Catechism, is that you should go to confession if you're a Catholic at least once a year. Some people go every week. You know, and so it did a little a bit of time, um, and I had something I needed to do, so uh, I decided that today was the day that I was going to confession, and so I was talking to my prior, um, who absolved me, and we were able to get that done. So, I hope that you now have a little bit more information, and that you know what it means to go to confession and how to do it. Because you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruits and that your fruit should remain. And that we should go off into the world and that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. And so, since I'm awake today, and my heart is feeling lighter, and I'm about to go do something and spread some more light, I'm going to put on my mask, and take off the glasses that I only need when I'm reading, and we are going to go to, so, peace. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Gothic Energy. Light and love. Namaste.